Hello, welcome back to another episode of Human Humane Architecture from our cosmopolitan coastal city of Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, I'm here with Bishop Museum's Histor uh, DeSoto Brown again. Hi, DeSoto. Hello, Martin. And can we get the first picture up? Because for the longest time, we've been excited about either, each other's cultures. And this sort of compilation of images here shows that the colors of Lay's is always different on the other sides of the world. <laughs> so Yes, um, and we might point out that the Lay that's in the center of the picture does bear the three colors of the German flag, but black, yellow, and red were also important fe uh, colors for Hawaiian culture for feather work too. There we go. And uh, to the left is me whenever I'm away and representing both cultures. I was sort of humorously wearing that in Iowa where these pictures are from. When I gave a lay to my mentor um, down there at the, at the bottom left, Cal Lewis, I used the Kukuya nut lay as the more authentic. And then this one is again, is sort of in a humorous way saying that we're in between these worlds, uh, sort of literally and figuratively speaking and, and spiritually when we're talking about it. So let's go to the next slide, which we want to encourage our audience to think about them and their relationship between climate and culture. And we both have in, had a taste of the cold originally, which is shown at the very, on the top is you and at the bottom is me. And then we're now in the warm, in the endless summer, referring to that legendary movie's title. But um, today we want to actually remind us and the audience, please, about the time we were excited to enter the beginning of the adult world, which was beginning of high school. And that's us at the very right. And I, I, I said this before, you look like JFK there to slow down. <laughs> Well, I wasn't very excited at this at the time that this photograph was taken because I was being sent from here back to Connecticut to go to boarding school, which meant that I was going back to the cold weather. And you're accustomed to cold weather. I'm not accustomed to cold weather. So even though I'm smiling in this picture, I wasn't very happy. And I also had to wear a coat and tie, which I really did not like. Yeah, and I wasn't happy because uh, you and then Suzanne said the same, that the background actually isn't concrete what I wished, but it sort of made it look like concrete wood. But I'm standing in front of a wooden fence, and this is again the days before the preparation for the real world, and that typology we want to look into. And next slide is that while we've been talking about Germany for the longest time, I want to get you there, DeSoto, and uh, supposedly a bunch of other people going with us. And we would shoot for maybe the spring, next spring. And this one here is going to be a short tour in February including again another holiday so it would only be four days we would be gone and we're visiting a high school and a special needs school and so first slide is um we we next slide please we're going to look into things that we're not going to tell you here because otherwise you won't come but we will <laughs> talk about how local resources of materials um, could inform or should inform how you build. We, for example, this is a concrete plant that's on the way to the construction site, and we have out west Great Pacific Rocky Mountain Precast here, the prime manufacturer of precast concrete that we believe is the future for the island. Uh, next slide. Yeah, and I think we can also just say, too, that um, we talked beforehand about the necessity for using materials that come from the area where you are building and that those will be more appropriate and that they can also be used in a variety of different ways. So we saw in the previous slide all the different things that could be done with those. Mm -hmm. And that's, type, that's the type of thing you and I discuss a great deal. And, and next slide we want to talk about maybe clear out a misconception of many that architecture is this flamboyant big genius idea thing. And you just taught me a term before the show how this could be very different in many cases. And what is that term? Well, what you talked about um, the neighbors of this particular building not wanting it to be built. And I said that in English, in the United States, we use an expression NIMBY, N-I-M-B-Y, which means not in my backyard. And that's something that people complain about when something is going to be built near them that they don't want. Yeah. And so it, it turns into, I don't, I understand why we need to build that, but just don't build it right next to me. That's what exactly we will tell you about how that was in this case. And who did we going to take along? Maybe 
our new landscape program people because you see landscape and by the way what we should do here the rainwater of the roof gets shed off through the downspouts and then feeds that garden but maybe also people from the department of tropical plants and soil science from thomas lim and, and nicholas because then maybe coming back they would appreciate more what the vegetation we have here versus the one that has to make it through tough winters over there right yes so next slide what else are we going to see? Uh, this is greetings to one of our biggest fans and our dear colleague and friend, Ron Lindgren, who is Killingsworth. And we've been talking a lot about classicism. And along the lines of the case study houses, is probably an homage of us, our family business, to that, that the building is almost non-existing or very austere from the outside. And only gradually, as you see at the very bottom, then sort of opens up once you get closer or you come around. And, you know, the other thing I was going to say, too, we can remind people what we talked about last week was your family firm in Germany, once you had done one school, got hired to do a series of schools. Yeah. And so that became something that you learned about because you had clients having done one that sought you out for other similar types yeah. of buildings. Call that serial killer, right? Uh, <laughs> serial work, <laughs> next, not killer. Next slide. So... That is something that for the longest time, I've just been looking at mostly, mainly culturally. Um, the left ones are from uh, Scandinavian um, legend, Alva Alto, who always said, you know, the door handles are basically the handshake with a building. But in these days, we don't want to hide. We're, we're going to say this is in a year. So the, the Chinese who had started the coronavirus are now the best in getting it under control. So we're uh, optimistic this will have sort of gotten back into control but so what's the current debate other debate about these architectural details and we should probably have Department of Health people coming with us well we also talked about too just beforehand uh, how coronavirus can live on different surfaces for different amounts of time depending on the climate and what the surface is and you had told me that the the metal that you used for these handles on the right was specifically with the idea that various viruses would be less likely to live on them, but it depends not only on the surface, but, now, the, but the climate as well. So there's coronavirus, no discursive discussions it, about yeah, it. Yeah, we, we don't is, really by know. The way, it's it's, it's copper-based, so this is brass. And again, we don't tell you more, otherwise you don't come with us. That's so. right. Next slide. What else we're going to talk about is something ironically now the arabs gonna dump the oil price and it makes us environmentalists really you know mad because then uh, you know oil is cheap again but we don't give up in saying architecture needs to address the environment in a post-fossil way so we will talk about how buildings can address that this gives you some clue and more when we're there yeah Next. and let me just point out too Oil may be cheap right now, but it won't be in the future. So exactly. oil always comes up and down. And yeah. building long term, you don't want to depend on the idea of cheap fossil fuel being around forever. Yeah. And next slide. Um, and and you basically said this. You asked me. You said, "Is is what kind of client is that?" And the nature is public, right? This Correct. is society as a client, and that one should be ahead of the game and, and should demonstrate excellence. This is a condition we will experience. You guys have to buy some winter clothes because it's going to be cold in, in February there, but not in the building. And it's mainly been heated by the sun, as you can see here at the top page. That sort of, you know, light on the floor is actually the sun coming in through the very southern glass wall. While, next slide. Um, you know, you want to touch on classicism. I mean, you before the show, you said something you should repeat. Well, one of the things that struck me is that this building really just show, d does show a classical, uh, and we'll see more pictures of it. It does have a very classical type of feeling to it, but we debated um, discussing the idea of classic architecture as a mandate from the state. In other words, just recently, Donald Trump stated that he thought that there should be classical buildings or that there should be a law that uh, buildings built by the federal government have to follow a classical style. And one of the things that really is offensive about that is that Hitler, during his reign, also did the same thing of declaring that there had to be an official German government style, which was based on classicism, which was done obviously in a different manner than what this building shows. But 
in that way, that is an extremely offensive type of statement, and it bothered me a great deal that the federal government of the United States was trying to impose that. And so did a Jay Fidel, and that's why we did a show together. And, and thank you. Next slide. This building here hopefully shows that this is cultivated classicism versus cynical classicism, how we called his mandate. This is something we, we should, and, and at the very beginning, we had a little uh, quote picture of a show that I did with Mr. Cole Green, showmaster, that I called Mr. Easy Breezy. And we choose this building as the background because it's the most that we could take home and learn from it actually literally, because this is an exoskeleton and this is a summer condition that we won't experience when we're over there, but we know how it is all the time here. So here you can see that the exoskeleton, so what holds up the building is also keeping the building cool. And next slide will show that it not only does it by shading and keeping the windows cool, but also the lanai. So you could actually be on the lanai and be comfortable. Um, next slide. Um, and we will experience, and there is a tongue breaker. You want to go ahead and say, how do you pronounce uh, it in English? <laughs> I, I'm, in not even, I'm not even going to try that word. You say it. You I say, say it. in Germany, it's, it's equally challenging. It's phenomenologisch. So it's about the phenomenon. And this is a research area in architecture that such things you can only experience in real. You cannot get this across, although you might say this looks appealing, but the question is how does it feel comfortably? I mean, you know, thermal comfort wise, how does it smell? How does it sound? Acoustics is a big thing. This is a school building, there's even code. So all these things we have to experience on site because you can't do virtually. Right. Uh, Right, and by visiting it in person. The other thing that I've also pointed out is that the buildings vary in terms of how they're illuminated. So a building illuminated from the outside during the day differs from a building illuminated from the inside during the night. And we've just seen two views of this building, day and night, to show how it looks under both of those situations, which comes back to the phenomenological, or whatever that is, Very well uh, said. experience. The tongue is still intact. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. And, you know, last but not at all least, buildings, especially as Jay likes to talk about civic buildings, should be engaging. And obviously people engage here in and around the building in a very literal way. These are the so excited high school students. They're excited about something else, about discovering the opposite gender, right? Yeah. Which is part of growing up. <laughs> So that should be built into the mandate of classicism as well, right, here yeah. in the United States. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, next slide, talking the human factor. This is the other project we want to discover, and that's the most challenging project we've ever done as a firm. We were asked, as you kindly said, based upon track records of these other projects, to build a 40,000 square foot school for mentally disabled children. I had never met for unfortunate circumstances, any disabled people whatsoever. So I had to have this steep learning curve. And while you just like keep it with a symbol and saying American Disability Act, and you just do everything off the book and check marks, I wanted to know how these people really are. And the icons at the top are the program. The school is actually called Integrated Learning with All Senses, spelled Ilmazi in Germany. And unlike we, where we can suppress other essential senses and, and be happy when things just look good, uh, these kids can't. So I, after I've gotten to know them through this project, I believe they're actually more normal than us considered to be normal people. And yeah, and you, and you were saying that because in this particular situation, as you said, we can cover up if there are deficiencies or things that bother us or make us angry or whatever, yeah. and those kids can't. So you have to take all of those things into consideration in terms of not only educating them, but the surroundings in which you do it. And that's what you said you did. Yeah. And this architectural model basically shows how nature, the elements, light and air and views are infused into the building. Everything that glows is basically open space because it's essential for these kids. They basically go nuts if you don't provide them. And we go nuts as well, but we don't show, as you yeah. say, you know, immediately. We suppress this, we cover it up. And it shows up somehow and later, but with these, you know, kids immediately. Next slide. So we will basically talk about, I will share my learning curve. These are just three pictures that, you know, um, again, I listened to the future director of the school and there was this big learning curve 
again, and to what did it lead? We had to make a decision. The next slide, we came to the conclusion we cannot build conventionally. We were doing something that Tropicare Rockwood calls prototyping, architecture prototyping. When we were telling the client that we think we can only build in timber, solid timber with no interior finishing, there is no shit rock, as I call it, no gypsum, no nothing, no covering up. It's all real and authentic, the real deal. The client basically said, I think you guys need more treatment than my kids. And we asked him before he fired, before he might have fired us to give us 3,000 euros and we built this full scale mock up, had it is in this hallway for three weeks. And these client guys called me every morning with another reason why it wouldn't work. And I was resisting that. And at three weeks, he said, damn it, do it. But then I also said, get it out of my hallway because it's a fire hazard. And we said, well, thank you very much for identifying that. And Maybe you assigned as a very qualified fire rating engineer consultant, which I did, and we get to that at the very end. So we'll talk about that, amongst other things, which are next slide. Well, wait, before we do that, though, yeah. uh, here's a section oh, yeah. of that, that that you have brought with you. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, these are vertical members with a with sort of a space in between them. Yeah. And this is what it looked like. And you said that you left this unfinished. So this is just natural wood inside, correct? Yeah. And this is actually what you hold up is something that, that has to be added on because while here we could do, there's a term single wall construction. You cannot do that in Germany under the extreme climates and also the really extreme, way more extreme than here, um, energy sufficiency um, uh, standards, which again, we should have um, basically mechanical engineers and sustainability people join us that they can experience how a government is basically mandating and encouraging to build really off the grid. So what you were holding up, next slide, um, is actually something. So this is the structure. So we will hopefully have some mechanical engineers with us, structural engineers who you know, are getting excited about the nature of prefabricating. Next slide. And, and did you say also that this is the exterior is, yeah. is like no, this too? That's, so, that's, that, so that will be very interesting to see how no, this uh, has weathered Yeah, and we will see time. in a minute, we give a little appetizer, not too much because otherwise you won't go with us, but next slide. And we will see other it, uh, innovative materials. So I will share the story uh, about what Tricky B sustainability is here that a plastic foil, there's a roof material that's called ETFE, ethylene tetrafluoroethylene, and the most flamboyant project is the one that's above there that in a year will be back to public business. But right now they're going to have a ghost game here. This is the major soccer stadium in Munich in Germany, and it's comprised of the same facade of that material. And how I learned that this is more sustainable than glass, so a plastic bag over a courtyard that can be more sustainable than basically melted sand, which glass is, we will share with you when we're there because it doesn't seem obvious to begin with, but all things considered, we will learn that. And and you pointed out too, in that in this picture that we're looking at, that is actually the sunshine coming through. That's not artificial light. Yeah. And you said too that the um, admitting UV rays is part of the requirement for the students in this school. So, well, yeah, thank you for reminding me because they, due to their, you know, impacted health, both physically and, and, and psychologically and, and mentally, they, the problem is they, they should go outside all the time, but it's very cold. So they catch a cold and that's bad. So they can't stay inside because then they're lacking the, the healthy rays, the UV rays. And this particular material, different than glass, lets it get to them. So there's you know, this health aspect. So probably have Department of Health people come with us, how buildings can make people, or keep people healthy and make them happier through that, uh, which buildings have the chance to do. Next slide. Uh, and obviously human in inhabitation. Uh, this again, you see Christmas trees on the window. So that picture was taken around a similar time of that we will go there. Maybe there's snow, maybe there isn't. We, you can't really predict. And again, this is the finished project with a solid timber tectonics, no extra makeup added. It's the real deal, which again, we thought these kids need. Next slide. And um, we're gonna have a couple of reading assignments. There are a couple of publications that some most in English, so don't worry, some in German you can learn <laughs> that we'll deliver and provide before. And so you can come prepared. 
and then do what we call these all-American terms, uh, post-occupancy evaluation, POE, EBD, evidence-based design, and LCA, life cycle assessment, because buildings only show over time if they actually work. And as you pointed out, because there's going to be a tour before that, as you said, you know, we will talk to the directors and the and the teachers and they will be blunt and say, you know, which things have worked. And but they also say which things haven't worked, which are actually more important, because from these we learn only from these we learn, not from our successes, whatever, but from our failures we learn. Correct. Right. Right. And that is also very basic things like how does the traffic flow go through a building? Is the corner too sharp? Is it yeah. is it wide enough? Is it too skinny? All yeah. of those things, again, as you say, you don't know until you're well, actually and in especially, it. Especially, thank you to Soda, in a school like that where the kids can't really maneuver, right? I mean, right. they can hardly walk in their wheelchairs. So it, this pushes it to the edge, all these things, you know, considering exactly. Right. Next slide is going to get to your closer to your sample because that was actually how it looked like to begin with and it looks rather similar to the sample you were holding up and um, again at the top right I put in a recent news article because right after the show with um, with Jay about Trump's classicism he sent me a link to and see what the the French president is doing he wants to mandate in a better way he wants to mandate that public buildings have to use 50 percent of wood of timber which potentially is the building material that can help saving the planet. This little German uh, headline there is from a recent local newspaper where they, the politicians, the Green Party is basically promoting to build a new school entirely out of wood. And some clever journalists were saying, hey, wait a minute, there was this pioneer that did that some almost two decades ago. So it's definitely worth looking back. And next slide. Um, we will talk about the challenges. The, the roofs were a challenge. Um, there's green roof on there. They were challenging. And next slide is going to be, um, this is how it looks today. And as you said, it's interesting. How does this weather, this uh, special wood treatment is called um, thermally modifying timber. We did a show way back that we say it could be potentially of interest for the island. And you can hold up the two other Correct. samples you have, right, if you right. don't mind. So these are samples which uh, Martin has brought in. This is the original ironwood. Now, ironwood is an invasive species here. Mm -hmm. And it is something that grows very fast. And you can cut it down, it'll grow again. This is the natural, uh, the way it looks naturally. This one in this hand has been treated. And so you can see not only does it look different, but I think it, as, as Martin said, it's actually less palatable to termites which is a very good thing here. And I'm sure it has, it has other very positive yeah. properties as well. Yeah, and at the top right, you can see our um, sort of crash test dummies on their own choice, Chris Jagueta and Siraj Sharif, who were, when they were doing the Copenhagen program, where the project, as indicated with this sort of label, their index design award, got an award from the Danish Crown Prince. They were at the, at that time, Stockholm Exchange and came over for a day and that's where the idea started to say well if someone would take more time one could experience this in more detail and again uh, you can take something home even literally the the stuff you showed is from the mentee nick civitano and next slide uh very f hot off the press or of the often we can say here is uh kelly keanu who is doing his doc project with me and he's looking into which I can show up here. This is actually cocoa palm wood, so a local resource that gets basically friction welded with these uh, wooden ligno lock pens made by a on the edge of the Mauka of the Alps uh, by a German company called Beck. And actually, Kali did the same we want to do. He flew there and visited with them, and they advised him. And here's his fire rating testing. This is his proposition to solve the housing crisis on the island that uh, the transit-oriented development, four to five story building, uh, buildings to house the too many people on an island could be taken care of. Uh, again, inspired by the project on the left, this was an article I wrote with this very fire rating engineer about the project we did. Next slide. And we will, uh, referring to a show here that we did on, in the old show days, the previous show, Urban Transcendence, we called it Germany's Kakaako, Hamburg Harbor City. We plan to go there too. This is a fellow uh, Mackay city, Hamburg, and it has a harbor. Hopefully the, the cruise ship problematic of, um, 
you know, Corona has by then sort of softened itself. And this is a this is a neighborhood that again has a lot to do with Kakaako and how they you know basically dealt with education in an urban fabric on steroids is is very very interesting and worth to learn. And uh, last slide here, the final assessment will be what the Soto. Well, the final assessment after people return from their trip to Germany and having seen these buildings and seen all the details that uh, you just talked about and we talked about will be to create a think tech program about it. And so that uh, that will be an exercise in creating a video, writing it, uh, producing it and doing all that other stuff. So it won't just be the people who are architecturally oriented who will be involved, but there'll be people who know about production, video and so forth to do the final assessment of what this particular trip taught them when they went all the way over to the other side of the world to Germany where it was cold and they saw these interesting innovative buildings. Yeah, and of course we as veterans having done shows, we will train them. But again, as you said, it might be actually people from the College of Communication, uh, journalism that wanna join us that use it as a chance to report from the other side of the world about something innovative to take home to Hawaii, as you said. So. Hopefully we got you excited to join us. Next week is actually gonna be spring break. And so we're gonna try to uh, get you excited about our next year's spring break trip, which is touching on another very essential, especially these days in the Corona, very essential typology of nutrition. And until then, please stay uh, educatedly elaborate, elaboratively educated. Bye-bye.